Thomas Fatty Walsh was a criminal associate of Charlie Luciano and a bodyguard for Arnold Rothstein. In March 1929, he was shot to death in Miami at the Biltmore Hotel. And it is rumoured that Fatty's ghost still haunts that location to this day. Let's check him out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a quick look at the murder of Prohibition era gangster Thomas Fatty Walsh and the rumours that his ghost haunts the Biltmore Hotel. Thomas Fatty Walsh, also known as Fat Walsh, was a mobster who was associated with many key figures in organised crime in New York in the 1920s. Fatty Walsh was associated with Dutch Schultz, Legs Diamond and Charlie Luciano. But he is most famously known as a bodyguard for Arnold Rothstein, the man that many historians cite as being the father of organised crime in New York. Thomas Walsh was born in 1889 and had a criminal record dating back to 1914. Up until his murder in 1929, Walsh had been arrested eight times with two convictions. In the 1920s, as well as being a bodyguard for Arnold Rothstein, Walsh was involved in bootlegging, gambling and narcotics. As mentioned, he was close with Charlie Luciano, although this is rarely discussed. And in 1926, Fatty Walsh, Charlie Luciano and the Diamond Brothers Ed and Jack were arrested for the assault of insurance broker Albert Levy. Levy states that he was being driven home by his chauffeur Charles Haffman and that he had $8,000 on him. Mob historian Christian Cipollini writes about this incident in his excellent book on Charlie Luciano. It says, A car approached. Someone from inside demanded money, but Haffman tried to evade the robbers. Four men, Levy told police, exited a vehicle, firing shots, some of which hit Levy. A nearby patrolman helped thwart the attack, but the perpetrators escaped the scene. Cops later grabbed the four suspects in for questioning and brought two of them before Levy in his hospital room. The insurance broker suddenly refused to press charges, saying they were the wrong men. Fatty Walsh was again arrested alongside Charlie Luciano not long after the murder of Arnold Rothstein in November 1928. Also arrested with them was mobster George Ufner. Walsh, Luciano and Ufner were arrested in connection with a payroll robbery on October 5th 1928. However, the police were using this arrest as an excuse to quiz the men about Rothstein's murder. Fatty Walsh told the police that he had actually quit working as Rothstein's bodyguard several months prior to his killing. Walsh stated, Rothstein was too cheap. He wouldn't pay his bills. It is also alleged by some sources that shortly after Rothstein's shooting, Fatty Walsh and Charlie Luciano went to Rothstein's office to look for paperwork on narcotics deals that Rothstein was involved in. Afner, Walsh and Luciano were eventually cleared of the payroll robbery and no charges issued with regards to the Rothstein murder. Interestingly, although Walsh stated that he no longer worked for Rothstein, he was the person who called Rothstein's wife Carolyn the night of the shooting to tell her that her husband was in hospital. As David Petruza's excellent book on Rothstein states, not long afterward, the phone rang. It was Rothstein's ex-bodyguard, Fats Walsh. Carolyn recognised his voice immediately. Rothstein has been in an accident, said Walsh, calling from Rothstein's 57th Street office. Where is he? At the Polyclinic Hospital, Fats said. I'll call for you right away. Carolyn dressed hurriedly and dashed downstairs. It didn't take Walsh long to make the three-block trip. He dropped her off at a side entrance to the hospital. Two photographers wanted to snap her picture. Fats threatened them with a revolver. In early 1929, Thomas Fatty Walsh, who was described as a boisterous, burly and abrasive mobster, was down in Florida where he held several business interests. On March 7th, 1929, Fatty Walsh was in the Biltmore Hotel in Miami. 
A large suite of rooms, allegedly covering an entire floor of the location, were booked out in the name of Carl E. Gaylord. These rooms were turned into an illicit gambling den. Fatty Walsh and Arthur Clark, an alleged member of Legs Diamond's gang, were present in the mini casino, amongst gamblers, showgirls and mobsters. And then, in the early hours of the 7th of March, the revelling was abruptly interrupted by some commotion, followed by gunfire. The gamblers, showgirls and gangsters all deserted, leaving Thomas Fatty Walsh dead on the floor, and his pal, Arthur Clark, wounded with shots to the arm and chest. Fatty Walsh's murder officially remains unsolved, but there are several theories around it. Mobster Arthur Clark, who was wounded in the shooting, was predictably unhelpful, stating, I don't know anything about it. You won't get anything out of me. I don't think they were shooting at Fatty at all. But one witness was found. Showgirl Damaris Hotsy Totsy Daw. The dancer was hiding out in New York after the shooting and she relayed her story. As one newspaper reported, New York, March the 12th. Huge conspiracies. Drugs, gambling, liquor, fortunes in pocket money. But Thomas Fatty Walsh former bodyguard of Arnold Rothstein, did not die bullet riddled because of any of these things, but because he jibed a fellow racketeer for his stuttering. This was the amazing, simple and human story related at police headquarters today by Damaris Dorr, 18, the hotsy totsy girl of the stage and nightclubs. She told what purported to be an eyewitness story of the shooting. She was in the room of Fat Walsh in the Miami Biltmore Hotel at Coral Gables, Florida, and fled as Walsh toppled from his chair dead. The girl named Ed Wilson, already under indictment in Miami for the slaying as the killer. On the day of the shooting, Miss Dorr said, Walsh was kidding Wilson because Wilson stutters. Walsh mimicked him. Wilson's face got red. Then they got into an argument over the splitting up of $8,000 they made in gambling. Suddenly, Wilson, who was pretty angry, leaped up and began firing. The bullets struck Walsh first, but Arthur Clark tried to go to his assistance and he was shot too. Walsh fell off his chair onto the floor. I screamed and ran out. An arrest warrant had been issued for Ed Wilson, who had apparently escaped to Cuba. But in the end, nothing came of it. Another theory was that Walsh's murder was connected with the killing of Arnold Rothstein, which had occurred only three months prior. And another theory was that Walsh was killed over a bootlegging deal gone wrong. But again, nothing has been confirmed. Thomas Fatty Walsh's body was returned to New York and buried in Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, in a plot where he would later be joined by his brother Gerald in 1930 and their mother Mary in 1946. Hundreds attended Fatty's lavish funeral, consisting of a large amount of gangsters and law enforcement. Arthur Clarke would comment on the murder of his and Luciano's pal, Fatty Walsh. He was shot down like a dog. He never had a chance. Thomas Fatty Walsh, the well-connected mobster, would largely be forgotten if it wasn't for the rumours surrounding his ghost haunting the Biltmore Hotel. Over the years, many visitors to the hotel have reported that when they enter the elevator and press the button for their floor, the elevator ignores this and takes them to the floor where Fatty was murdered. The doors of the elevator then open and stay open, whilst the lights of the elevator flicker on and off. There have also been alleged sightings of Walsh on this floor, and one report states that President Bill Clinton said, perhaps jokingly, that Fatty was messing with his TV when he stayed at the Biltmore and wouldn't let him watch the football. Interestingly, the floor in question at the Biltmore, where the elevator stops and the sightings occur, is the 13th floor. Although reports vary as to whether Fatty was killed on this floor, or in fact, on the 14th floor. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.